Hi, welcome back. Thanks so much for joining me. In today's video, I have so much to share. I'll start with a primitive DIY that I know you'll definitely want to try making. Then I'll take you out to my mudroom laundry room area and give you a full room tour. There's not lots of room, but there's lots of charm. I hope you'll stick with me till the end of this video because at the end of my video, I plan to share some primitive DIYs that I've been busy working on that I plan to sell in my booth at the Crossroads Country Mall. I bought these gingerbread a couple weeks ago at the Crossroads Country Mall and I only paid around $4 each for these. And when I saw them, I knew they really weren't gonna go in with my decorating, but I also knew exactly what I wanted to do with these. I'm only going to use the back side since I can't really do much to change up the embellishments that are on the front. This step I've never done before, but I'm gonna give it a shot and see how it works. Maybe I might be surprised and like the result. I'm going to try to make these safety pins look rusty by using Mod Podge and Instant Coffee. As I was painting my safety pins, my daughter wanted to introduce you all to the newest member of our family. This is her teddy bear hamster milkshake. Isn't he adorable? She's had him now for about six weeks, and this one night a couple of weeks ago, he actually got out of his cage. Thankfully for us, we crate our dog at night, and the hamster was found safe and sound. I did two coats of the Modge Podge and Instant Coffee, but for the second coat, I decided to put the Instant Coffee in a Ziploc bag. This way was a lot less mess. It kept my hands a lot cleaner because the coffee will stain your skin. So if you have plastic gloves, you definitely might want to use those with this DIY. And also to speed up the drying process, I put mine on a cookie sheet in my oven at 170 degrees. Here's what the finished result looks like. I bought these buttons at Walmart and I really like these because they have a rustic look. I'm gonna play around and see what buttons I like best for the eyes. I think on one, I'm going to give it mismatched eyes because I definitely think that's really gonna give it a special appearance and definitely a more primitive look Oh, and by the way, did I mention this is a primitive DIY? I gotta tell ya, I'm loving all things primitive and I can't wait to show you the primitive DIYs I've been working on at the end of my video. I'm using a needle and cross stitching thread to attach these buttons. The eyes are on and now I'm going to use this fabric to make a little scarf. I really like this fabric because I think it has an Americana look. Super cute, I'm liking it. And here's what it looks like after I added the safety pins. 
Now for the fun part, and I'd like to mention that this recipe came from my friend Joanne over at The Curated Home. If you haven't had a chance yet to visit Joanne's channel, please stop over and give her a visit. She is so close to reaching her 500 subscriber milestone, and I would love to help her achieve that goal. This mixture is called Coffee Grunge Mix, and all it is is water, instant coffee or your used coffee grounds, cinnamon, nutmeg, and vanilla, and it smells amazing. I just added all of the ingredients right into the jar, gave it a good shake, and I was ready to use it. This mixture can be saved and reused. All you have to do is heat it up a little bit if you want in between uses. I'll link Joanne's channel below in my description box and also the recipe for this coffee grunge mix. And here's the end result. I am so happy with how these turned out. I did place these in my oven on a cookie sheet at 170 degrees Fahrenheit to help them dry a little bit quicker. I also want to mention that after the grunge mix dries, it gives the fabric a stiffer feel and a more aged look. I just found these adorable little ornaments. Aren't these so cute? They are made from little baby socks. I think these are the cutest. They were probably intended for a Christmas tree for at Christmas time, but I think they can be incorporated on a everyday tree. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to add these in with the ornaments that my mom and I made when I was home at Christmas, because that's what I'm using currently on the tree that I have out in my mudroom. And I'll be sharing that with you very soon. And if you haven't had a chance yet to see how my mom and I made those ornaments, I'll be sure to include that video below in my description box. How many of you have kept baby socks from your own child or your grandchild? This would make a great DIY for a little keepsake that you could use on your tree or even decorate a doorknob or anywhere that you wanna add a little ornament. This would also make a great gift for a grandparent or a special relative or friend showing you how I decorated all of the areas in my mudroom. Then after I show you everything up close, I'll show you how it all looks together. Sometimes it's just really nice to decorate something and know you can leave it out all year round. And that was why I made these ornaments at Christmas time with my mom. I wanted something that I knew I'd be able to decorate with all year round. And honestly, if I wanted to leave these up until Christmas, I could leave them up until Christmas. They work all year. And I added this sweet little picture here. Doesn't that look cute? I didn't want to add anything like a tree topper. And when I was decorating out here, I came across that picture and I thought that is going to look perfect because it looks like the star on top. I placed my tree inside this basket. I've had it for a long time. I believe I thrifted it at Goodwill and I filled it inside with some pine cones. I didn't know really what else would work or tie in and I thought pine cones are perfect. This ladder, I purchased that at the Crossroads Country Mall. Can't beat it, I love this ladder. I also bought a wooden box that goes with this, but I'm not using that out here because my tree wouldn't fit. It would have been fantastic if my tree would have fit and I could have used it, but it didn't. So that's why I'm using this basket, but I think the basket works good. And this little angel, I also purchased that at the Crossroads Country Mall. Isn't she sweet? I think she's adorable. And then I also found this, but this I purchased that at Goodwill. But I think those two pieces look really cute together. I've had this wreath for a long time, but what I did was added this little 
sign. I found the sign at Goodwill for just a couple dollars and I didn't even connect them. I just hung them both on the command hook, but I like that look. My mudroom is also my laundry room. Yep, I don't really like it, but hey, it's what I'm stuck with, so I have to deal with it. So I really try and be creative because I don't want the main room where people come into my home to look like a laundry room. I want it to look pretty. So I really try to find ways to get creative and blend the whole look together. It would be really nice if we could put some kind of even folding doors here, but there's just not enough room because our door, the way that it's set up, would hit into it. And we can't change the way the door opens because then it would just make entering our home one big fiasco. There's just not enough room. This is a really, it's a nice sized room, but it's very narrow. It's longer more than it is wide. So I just do the best at what I can with what I have. And I really like how this looks. I think this looks super cute. And this banner, I bought that at the Not Dot Shop. I shared that recently in one of my videos and I'll be sure if you haven't seen that to link it below in my description box. And this little outfit, you may remember I shared that in one of my recent videos. I actually had it in my living room, but I swapped that out with something else. I'll show you here sometime soon, but I think that looks so cute. It just looks like, you know, I was doing the laundry and washed that little outfit and hung it up there but I think that looks so lovely. And here I have my washboards and an old lantern and the basin that was given to me by my mom. And here I just have a little iron and just some other items. This is where I put the shoe form right here or shoe stretcher. I think that looks cute there. Just kept it nice and simple. That sign came from Hobby Lobby last year or oh no, I'm sorry. I'm wrong. It came from Target. Where did that come from? Gosh, no, I can't remember. I think it actually did come from Hobby Lobby last year. Now I remember it came from Michael's last year. Yep, I'm 100% sure it came from Michael's. It might be a little bit tricky for me to show all three of these together. So I'm just gonna give you a view like this. I purchased these at Goodwill a few years ago and they really tied in nice with my Tuscan decorating. But I left them up because I think they also work really good for my primitive country decorating. The colors are perfect. The two that are long, I purchased those both at a Goodwill together. And then the one in the center, I purchased at a completely different Goodwill, but they all tie in perfectly together. This beautiful painting my sister made Back in 1981, my sister died way too young. She had so much talent. I've told you guys different times about my sister and I've shared different pieces that my sister had made. And this is one of the pieces that, that I just love. My brother-in-law gave this picture to me after my sister passed away and I love this picture because not only because my sister painted it, but because my husband loves to fish and I've shared that before. That is his number one hobby. He travels the world fishing. He loves it. And 
So I think this is just perfect. And it kind of makes me think that this might be what my husband looked like when he was younger because it has the color of hair that my husband had when he was a little guy. So this is just, I love this picture. It's just, this painting is beautiful. And I'm just gonna get you a little bit closer here just so you can really see it. And this is an oil painting. My sister loved to do oil painting. But unfortunately, I do not have the talent with this kind of painting. I can paint walls and I can paint furniture, but nope, I was not blessed with her talent. My little stand, you might remember if you've been following me, I painted this last year and I shared it in one of my videos. On the top, I didn't place any kind of fabric because I have some other fabric on the bottom and on the stand below. So I really didn't feel that it needed any. And I just added the book ends and a few old books down here. This is where I have some fabric and I really like some of these pieces here. This is an old bell and I'm just gonna let you see that. So this bell, it was my mom's and growing up when I was a kid, my mom decorated with it and she had it placed where I could easily get it. And okay, do you know where I'm going with this? <laughs> I wanted to ring this bell all the time. So I think eventually my mom put it where I was no longer able to reach this, but I loved this bell. And I'm not going to pick it up because, you know, some people are sensitive to sound and it is very loud. I think it's actually a cowbell. I think they would have put the, uh, the, harness through here or the collar through here and put it around the neck of the cow or the bull. So, but that's what I think it is. And this is one of my ironstone plates that I thrifted recently. And I just placed some old books in that clock in that wooden box. I think that looks so cute. I really like that look. And can you see, I did tuck some greenery back in there and on the front, I placed this. I really like putting things on the fronts of my cabinets. I don't know, I just think it, it just adds a little pretty touch. What do you think? This is one of those runners that I found a couple weeks ago at the Crossroads Country Mall. I thought this would look great out here in this room. It's perfect for spring and it fits this little table so nicely. And I really like it because it acts, it adds so much accent to this little table because I don't need a lot because this is so decorative. So I just placed this cute little lamp right in the center and underneath I have that and I love that look. I think it looks so cute. Here's how I decorated with my one gingerbread man. I love this look. I am so pleased with how it turned out. It looks so old. Look at the eyes. Even the eyes, I think, shifted a little bit while I had it in the oven. And it looks so old. It has a leathered appearance now. And the only thing I really wish I wouldn't have done was used that glossy Mod Podge. But I don't know, I kind of actually don't mind it because it gives it a more oiled look around those uh, safety pins. I don't know. I like it though. I am so happy with it. I think it looks fantastic. And look, it's so like stiff now. <laughs> can't move it at all. So 
I, I really like him. I love the whole look. I think the whole look is just fantastic. And if you saw how I decorated my foyer, I decorated with another pillow. This one um, is very similar to it, but this one I found at Goodwill. My other one I found at the Crossroads Country Mall. And I'll be sure to link that video below in my description box. I found this recently at Goodwill and when I first bought it, I thought, okay, yep, I'm going to resell this in my booth. But I brought it home and the more I looked at it, I thought, oh, I can't get rid of it. It's so cute. It'll look adorable out here in this room for spring. So for now, I'm keeping it, but hey, you never know. Eventually, I might add it to my booth. I backed up as far as I can to try to show you this area. So I might have to go back and give you a look at things just by themselves because I can't go back any further. These arches here or uh, old windows, I'm not really sure, just maybe wall art. My niece found these for me last year at a yard sale. And I thought they looked really nice here. I could paint them, but for now, I just don't want to. I like how they look and the paint that's on them is really uh, just rough looking. It's not fancy. Here, I'll show you what I mean in this one little area. See, you can see that. So for now, I really don't want to touch that because I like that rough look. And I added this uh, grapevine wreath. I think that's nice and simple. I really like it. And here, what I did to accent my candles is just wrapped some pitberry garland and made a little bit of, excuse me, I made a little candle ring and I like that. I think that's a nice look. If you've been following me, you probably saw me share these before. I thrifted these last year at a Goodwill. They are on old barn wood and I really like them. Do you see that? Look at that wood. Oh, that's just so beautiful. I love old barn wood. I would love to have floors of old barn wood. That would just be awesome. This is how I decorated the floor beside this dry sink. I tucked in that pitberry wreath and this is where I placed my shoe shine. And do any of you know what this is? Maybe some of you actually have one. My husband got this for me for Christmas. And at first I just looked at it and I looked at him and I didn't know if it was a joke or what, but the more I looked at it, I started to see the possibilities. But then when I discovered what it was, I was really excited because my hubby knows that I'm really into a new style of decorating and he was wanting to buy me things that would you know, fit into my decor. And this is actually a boot remover. Isn't that cool? It's actually pretty old and I like it. I think it's adorable. Do you have any of these? Do any of you have one like this or maybe one similar? Let me know in my comments. And for the top of my dry sink, this is how I decorated. Do you remember this? A couple of these pieces that I'll be showing you, you might remember from my haul videos, but this is the basin and I think that looks so cute. Remember I told you I had an idea for that brush and at first I thought it might've been an old scrub brush, but then somebody said they thought it was possibly a shoe shine brush. So I added it there because I have this shoe shine area here. So I just thought the whole look tied in good together. And I got this little soap tin at the Not Dot shop. And I think that looks so sweet in there. These are old 
clothespins. I purchased those at the Crossroads Country Mall. And this is where I hung this little, I don't know what you want to call it. <laughs> I have no idea, but I think it looks super cute. I want to try making something similar to this. And if I do, you better believe I'll be sure to share how I did it. And on the side here, I have, I have a lot going on in this area, but I love it. I just, I am having so much fun decorating in this style. So I took some of my husband's old socks. These are very old, so he's not going to miss them. And I hung this little minnow tin. This minnow tin was actually my dad's. So I love it. It just makes me think that somebody long ago was going to head out to go fishing and they, or they just came home from fishing and they just placed it there. And then this is where I put the other gingerbread and I love this and it might be kind of difficult to see. I apologize. It's kind of dark, but let me tell you about this area. So I shared this, I thought it was like a sifter or a sieve, but someone told me that it was actually for an old coal stove. So maybe it was for a potbelly stove. I don't know, but I really like it. It's old. It is very old. And this bucket my mom gave me. So growing up, when my mom was little, her mom kept her clothespins in this. And my mom also kept all of her old clothespins in it. And I asked my mom if she needed it. And of course, mom said, nope, she didn't need it that I could have it. I'm just going to pull this out here so I can show you better. So I knew right away what I wanted to do with it. And I just placed this other gingerbread man right down inside of that bucket. Doesn't that look so cute? I am so tickled with how these turned out. Oh my goodness. So yeah, the other side of them is still, hello. <laughs> it's still like this because I only did the one side because even if I did cover this with the grubby mix, you'd still see it. So I'm just always going to do my best to not show the back side of these when I'm decorating but I think these are so cute. Oh my goodness. Have any of you ever made anything like this with the grubby mixture on cloth surfaces? I, I just, I love these. I love these so much. And you, if you like this kind of craft, my friend Joanne, who I got this mixture from, she made these amazing desserts recently. They're faux desserts. And they were just absolutely amazing. So she used this mixture on them. And I just, I loved the look. Well, I've always loved this like grubby look on cloth items and stuff, but I'd never seen it done on faux food. So I really think you'll love that. So I hope you'll go and check out Joanne's channel. I'll be sure to link it below in my description box. I was hoping to find some information on this specific flower sack bag, but I couldn't find any. I know it's old and it is very aged on the back side of this bag. And I thought it was a fair price what I paid for it at $5. It is from New York, but other than that, I haven't really been able to find any information on it. But it's a nice old piece to have. I know flower sack bags like this were actually popular back in the 1800s through the depression. And they were really became popular around the depression. My mom, has told me stories about how her mom used to actually make her dresses out of old flower sack bags. And the ones that my grandma used to use actually had patterns on them. And my mom asked me if this one had any patterns and it doesn't, it's just this nice plain color. 
So maybe it's maybe a little older, maybe it's not quite as old. I'm still digging and if I can find information on it, I'll be sure to share it with you guys in a future video. But I think this is a nice little antique primitive piece to add to this dry sink. Do you have anything like this? Here's what I've been working on for my booth. I am so happy with how these turned out. I plan on redoing my booth at the Crossroads Country Mall this week, and I will definitely be adding all of these primitive little guys to my booth. And I plan to also be working on more to add. I also have a primitive country garlands uh, that I made. Those are already there, but I'm planning to also make some more and also some other primitive DIYs that I can add to my booth to sell. But I made two, so, two different sizes of gingerbread so far. I also made the heart, um, a star, and also a crow. I do want to make the crow pattern a little bit bigger. I made all of these by hand. I drew the pattern by myself, just tried to, you know, figure out something that would work. Then I cut it out and traced it onto the fabric. Uh, these were all sewn by hand. And I did add some little appliques and buttons and even some uh, antique looking bells. Those I did purchase from eBay, but these would make great basket fillers. They would make a great shelf sitter. You could hang them. These are so wonderful to decorate in so many areas of your home, especially if you love primitive country decorating. And did I mention these smell so good? Well, that's it for my video today. I really hope I was able to inspire your decorating and I hope I gave you an idea for a primitive DIY. And if you haven't already visited my friend Joanne, I really hope you'll stop in for a visit and tell her Melanie said hi. And I hope you all enjoy the rest of your week and I'll see you all again soon. Take care.